So let's get started. Uh, so who in here has any experience with Angular? I mean, okay. Uh, is any anybody in here who does have experience, kind of beginner level? Okay. Uh, this is kind of the the purpose of this whole uh, presentation. Um, you know, is to bring uh, beginners up to speed and level up everyone's skills so that we can understand core concepts and uh, develop complex web -like applications for uh, our clients more effectively. Um, so, first of all, why use Angular? And I, I grabbed this from uh, Angular's website. Really good explanation. Um, HTML is great for declaring static documents, but it falters when we try to use it uh, for declaring dynamic views in web applications. AngularJS lets you extend HTML vocabulary for your application. The resulting environment is uh, extraordinarily expressive, readable, and quick to develop. Um, so I've kind of put together a running list of uh, reasons why Angular is so beneficial to use. One um, one thing I didn't include is that I, I think Angular bridges the gap between design and development. Um, it, uh, I like it because uh, the first one on the list would say it follows an NV uh, star pattern uh, and I'll get touch on more of each of these uh, in a moment. Uh, it makes your code more modular, uh, which helps obviously uh, make it more maintainable in the end. Um, it future proofs uh, your code. It's backed by Google, um, so that's a, a definite plus. It's here to stay. Uh, it makes developing uh, applications faster. Uh, it's a like in the description, it said that it's an extension of HTML, and I think that uh, if you look at it that way, it's a little less intimidating to learn, and it, it um, kind of makes it easier to understand uh, the, the core concept of what it, it, it's aimed to, to do. Um, it has two-way data binding uh, and scope, which, which are awesome. Um, I, I haven't found a framework out there that does a good of a job at that uh, as, it, as Angular does. Uh, it provides directives, uh, both directives that uh, Angular provides in, uh, in the box, and uh, you can create your own custom directives. Um, it has filters, so you can filter the, <coughs> your, uh, your expressions. Um, it has a, a dependency injection, which is is huge at managing your dependencies in your application. Um, as services, uh, routes, simple API conception. It, it really makes uh, consuming APIs really uh, easy to, to do. Uh, and lastly, it's awesome. And that's a very good reason to use Angular. So if, if uh, for those of you not too familiar with uh, MVC, MVSTAR, Sometimes it's called MVW for uh, model view, whatever. Um, this is kind of a summary of, of that. Basically, the controller talks to the, the model and the view, and it, it updates the both the model and the views. And um, So basically, model view controller is an ar architectural design pattern that encourages improved application organization through a separation of concerns. Uh, it enforces the isolation of business data or models from the interface views uh, with a third component controllers uh, traditionally present to manage logic, user input, and the coordination of models and views. Um, so for those of, of you that aren't too familiar, views are you know, what you see. Um, you know, the models are the data and the controllers are what control it. So, uh, so let's first talk about a little bit about scope. 
Uh, and we're kind of going to touch on each of these things. For some of you, this may be a, a bit of a review, but uh, you know, everybody's on different levels. So uh, I figure let's just kind of start from the ground up. Uh, so scope is an object that refers to the application model is an uh, ex uh, execution context for expressions. Scopes are arranged in hierarchical structure which mimic the DOM structure from the application. Scope can watch expressions and propagate events. So I really like scope because it's, it's hierarchical like, like the DOM. Um, uh, so let's kind of jump into uh, uh, a quick demo. And right here we have, uh, and I actually developed all these for uh, interviews uh, because I've been finding that I've been interviewing a lot of uh, developers for an Angular position, so uh, just to see if they know Angular. But uh, in this, we want our, our name to, to go right here and have it be dynamic uh, so that the controller uh, puts your name here rather than just uh, you know going like this and typing my name here obviously that's going to display my name uh, so we have in our, our script file we have our app defined um, in our HTML we're saying that this is an app called the app uh, can everybody see this okay um, this on the body tag we're saying that uh, it's controlled by I mean controller ng controller this is a directive uh, that angular provides anything with ng dash uh, angular provides uh, so ng controller app controller so in here we uh, in our scripts file we we have a controller called app controller so that's wired up correctly. Now, scope, we can define a variable called name to the scope, and we can have it equal to whatever we want. So in this case, we'd have it equal to my name, and it's not displaying. And that's because we haven't put it in here. And to do that, we use this. Uh, double curly brace uh, syntax and double yes exactly and uh, we can put that same variable in here because this is using the scope and so now it's it's displaying my name uh, and obviously like you know we can change it in our controller to whatever we want so Joe you know for example yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> or Nick, all the way in Austin. So that's that's kind of a, a brief summary of what scope is. Uh, does anybody have any questions on what scope is and how it works? And we can have nested scope, so we can have another controller inside that, and you know, have a another controller that that has n the name variable and do the same thing. What controllers that aren't nested are is the scope independent for each controller? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, if you have one controller for one section of the page, and another controller for another section of the page, where you reference scope, is that independent or is it? Yeah, it's scope? it's independent. So if if uh, for example, if you nest uh, if you nest controllers, and on the inside controller you define, or on the outside controller you define name, that will be accessible by the inside controller. So you could do scope.name and have access to that outside controller. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you'll want to use something like emit or yeah, emit or broadcast to to broadcast those variables to uh, in inner uh, or outer controllers. So it works similar to function scope. Uh, yes. Yeah. Alright, so uh, moving on. <coughs> Uh, we have two-way two data binding, and this is what that means. Um, so in, in Angular apps, uh, it's 
automatic synchronization of data between the model and view components. Uh, so they're always synchronized, both, uh, and, and I'll get into that, but uh, the way that Angular implements data binding lets you treat the model as uh, this, the single source of truth in your application. The view is a projection of the model at all times. When the model changes, the view reflects the change, and vice versa. So when you change it, the, it'll be reflected in the view, and vice versa. Um, so let's go to the second demo. Uh, okay, so what we want to do is have this text reflect what, whatever we type in here. And so to do that, we are going to bind this name um, uh, variable that we've defined on the scope uh, to this, this input. So we use a directive called ng-model and have it equal to name. And now we see right here that it's being uh, reflected. So whenever this changes, if you notice, um, whenever I refresh, it's being reflected text input contents here in the in the box. So it's, that's basically showing where it's vice versa. It's two way. Um, so in here, we have this, and we can change it to whatever we want. Um, and obviously, it's going to change. So I think that's pretty neat. Uh, the advantage of this, you can do a really complex form and and uh, have the really huge object of that entire form and submit that object uh, via an API call. And uh, it's, it's really nice that way. So, uh, okay. So jumping back, um, You know, it's sometimes very slow. Okay, so um, directives. Uh, so at a high level, directives are markers uh, on the DOM element, on the DOM element, such as an attribute, element name, uh, comment, or CSS class that tells Angular JS's uh, HTML compiler uh, to attach a a specified behavior that uh, DOM element or even transform the object or the DOM element and its children. So basically, if you can see down there, I've written a directive called slide. Uh, I haven't written it, but it's uh, the implementation of that directive. And uh, so slide is obviously isn't a native HTML uh, element, uh, but uh, I, ha I have a file in uh, my Angular app that defines slide directive uh, that says that there's a duration attribute, a color attribute, a source attribute, and a link attribute that all um, you know use that data to compile uh, this this HTML structure. I could do something like this. Um, there's not a demo here. Sorry. Um, so I could do something like this where I do an ng-repeat um, and I'll get to that uh, have these these variables and then I have a, a an object that has image, color, link, duration, all, all these and it, it basically puts out, it returns <coughs> the HTML on the right um, so Let's uh, kind of jump into here to I'll show you a little bit of, about directives. So this is a an ng repeat example, and I basically have all these list items out here, and um, I I only want to do one list item. I already have uh, an object right here, and I want to use this object uh, in my uh, in my view, and basically return this output. Right now I just have it hard-coded so, so what I want to do 
is uh, use ng repeat, and that's I can say I get rid of this. So I only have one li, and on the element I want it to repeat, I just say ng dash repeat equals, and then I've called it animals, and I've assigned it the scope. So I say animal in animals. So this is basically the keyword that we're going to use within our element. Uh, so this is what it's looking at. Animals is the, the variable on the scope. So now I say animal dot, I think it's called name. Yeah, name. Oops, sorry. Animal that name, and it will. That's all my animals, and then I can do colon space animal dot type, and it will list out the type. So that's a mammal, bird, whatever. So, um, so that's a very simple way to repeat objects based on. Uh, an object in uh, in your controller, or uh, you know, I could I could get this from an API. I could uh, call a certain URL on the back end and and uh, get this via an HTTP request. Um, oh, am I running out of battery? Yeah. I've yeah. got one right here. Oh, great! Thank you. Hang on, I got one right here. IDs. Yep. Well, that guy is the other. <laughs> there Thanks. you go. No worries. Here, can you plug this in? Mash the keyboard first. Oh, great. Right. Spill the drink on your <laughs> That'd be wonderful. But it will be plugged in. Brian, I had a new Mac once and got through a football across the office and it hit this red bolt. Oh, um, no. It was a code red to read your drive on the keyboard. <laughs> Oh, that's <laughs> awful. Yeah, my own, too. It's my personal. Oh. Um, yeah, this is my Christmas, too. It's like a little plastic on the Oh. It's amazing. Yep. All right. So, uh, yeah, we can see how ng repeat works. That's a, a directive that uh, Angular provides uh, right out of the box. So, um, I won't get too far in detail uh, as, as far as making your own custom directives, I'll let you research that one, but um, that's pretty cool. So, so uh, let's, let's uh, touch on filters. Uh, so a filter formats the value of an expression for display to the user. Uh, they can be used in view templates, controllers, or services, and it's easy to define your own filter. So this is a syntax uh, bullet here. So first you have the expression or the variable that you're using, and then you put a pipe and then have the filter. So um, let's kind of jump into that real quick. Yeah. So we have a, uh, this input, and we want to filter our animals based on the input we have in here. So we, we have... You know, we've, we've already done this. Um, we want to filter the animals here. And uh, so uh, we want to first assign this an ng model. And, and call it like, I don't know, my filter. And then on the ng repeat, we can say pipe filter and then my filter and then in here we can start typing monkey for example. We got we got salmon right here because it has an MON at the end. But basically we can type anything we want and it will filter 
all the mammals, for example, uh, and it's really fluid, so uh, that's really nice. Yeah. Any questions? Makes sense. Pretty pretty basic, but uh, okay. And we already got that. <clears throat> okay, so a dependency injection. Uh, it's a software design pattern that deals with how components uh, get hold of their dependencies. The Angular injector subsystem is in charge of creating components, uh, resolving to their dependencies, and providing them to other components as requested. Uh, so they are loaded lazily, if you will. Um, and so when we request, or we have a controller, it's using scope, the scope uh, service, I guess, uh, ACPP service, the model service filter. And uh, the reason why we duplicate them is when we minify them, sometimes the variables can get changed to be, you know, one letter, for example. And so we need to map them. Uh, so scope is. In, in our array is uh, that we're storing it as a string that's not going to be uh, put as a letter. Um, so anyway. Um, next uh, one I want to cover is services. Angular services are substitutable objects that are wired together using dependency injection. Uh, you can use services to organize and share code across your app. Um, so let's just jump into another demo. Um, okay, so I've done this in my last project. I'm, I'm not going to uh, get into wearing it to the back end too much. Uh, I don't really have a back end I can wear into, but uh, I'm just going to hard code part of this to just for simplicity's sake. So we want to create a login uh, and uh, right here uh, let's see in our view uh, when we, whenever we click uh, lo uh, the login button right here we want it to execute a function called login. So we we say ng click, and uh, when you click it, it executes a function called login. But we don't want to store all of our logic that grabs that goes to the API, gets the user and password credentials, and and says uh, it's it's okay, uh, you're authenticated. Uh, we don't want to do that in our controller because we want that code to be reusable. We want to use it in, for example, a uh, modal dialog that pops up after um, five minutes or 30 minutes of inactivity. And uh, we want to use that same piece of code here on the login screen and on that modal uh, dialog. Uh, usually it is, but I, just because I was in a hurry, I, uh, just did this as a button instead of a submit input type, so, yeah, usually, you're right, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, um, so anyway, uh, we don't want to have that, that logic in the controller, but we do call an, a login function. And that login function basically calls the service. So we go to our controller here. We have a login function, but that calls uh, a service. Um, and we have a new new uh, file right here called services. We have uh, app.factory. Uh, and we give it the service name, which is auth service. We pass it in, uh, you know, the dependencies. I'm using group scope in here uh, to assign uh, is authenticated, true or false. And basically, this is a big object that is returning. And uh, this login function in this object, uh, I'm going to pass it credentials, which I'm getting from this username and password. 
and passing it in uh, with in the controller uh, scope.creds. So on the on the scope, I have um, creds as an object dot username. So that's equal to that, and then that's equal to the password. Um, so then, uh, anyway, I pass it into my service and the login function. In the login function, I say if, and you do an HTTP request at this point, but I just, for simplicity's sake, I say if it's equal to admin uh, and the password is 1234, then I say you're logged in, and I set the root scope is authenticated variable to true. If it's not equal to that, then I say, oh, sorry, try again. And I uh, make sure that the root scope is authenticated variable is at the false. Root scope is basically a scope for the just the document. Uh, it's, a, it's accessible by all controllers. And usually, like typically, it's not a good idea to use root scope for many things. But since this is a authentication variable, then you know, in some instances it is appropriate. So. Yeah. 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 So basically, whatever element, you know, it, it would only be relevant to that. You want it to be accessible globally. So that's why you use the root scope. Um, and I can use that because I'm injecting in here. Uh, anyway, so you know, it, uh, that's how it works. And then I haven't created a log logout function, but if I wanted to call this, I just call auth service logout, and it actually just sets the uh, is authenticated variable to false, and then it goes to the state login, so it goes to the login page. I don't have that wired up because I was out of time, but um, and then uh, I could have a, a check. I could have a heartbeat, basically, where it would check if that variable is, is set to uh, true, and if it's not, then I go to uh, the login page. Uh, if, for example, if your token expires or, or whatnot. Um, so anyway, I uh, you know, obviously if I you know, do some weird password and login information, it will say, oh, sorry, try again. But if I use the correct one and I hard coded in here for now, it will say, hey, you're logged in. And it set the root variable. You just can't see it because I don't have any other routes. So so that's how, uh, how that works. Um, does anybody have any question? I, I, I kind of breeze past that. And, yeah. So if you're in the DOM, if you're in the DOM and you call, uh, can you just go to it? Yeah, of course. Oh, it's just kind of long. It's like if you had something that was calling log out, it, it only needed to be log out. So, so, have to be off service, like so let's say I have this button right here. Let's just put a break and put a button that says log out. If I call log out, it's not going to do anything because I yes, I do have a log out function in my service, but it's not really being called because that's not relevant to this. You know, that's not what it's calling. It's not calling the logout function on the scope. Uh, so is what we'd need to do is say, uh, go to the controller and say, I have a function on this. Yes. Called. Yes. So log out. And then I'd say auth service dot log out and then now and I wouldn't have to pass anything yeah and now that would log out I mean it's not gonna what's that yeah so then I could say on log out I could just uh, do an alert log out 
and that's what I've got. Uh, but anyway, that's how you do it. Um, I probably just have a typo somewhere. Um, but anyway, so. uh, let's see. So services, I I still have a hard time wrapping my head around this sometimes. But um, services have three types. There's three types of services. Um, one is ironically just called services. Um, the second is called factories, and the third is called providers. Um, they all three have uh, uh, very similar uh, functions, but uh, some are more complex. You can see here how to use them. I mean, it's pretty straightforward services. It's just a services function. Uh, I uh, Let's see. So... Services, uh, when you're using a service, service type, um, when declaring service name as an injectable argument, you will be provided with an instance of the function. In other words, uh, new function you pass to service. Uh, with factories, uh, the result of doing that, when declaring factory name uh, as an injectable argument, you will be provided with the variable that is returned by invoking the function reference passed by module.factory. And providers, uh, it's a little more complex. When declaring provider name as an injectable argument, you'll be provided with provider function dot get to uh, the constructor function is initiated before the get method is called. Uh, provider function is the function reference passed to module.provider. Um, we were, Mike and I were actually talking about this yesterday. Do you remember, Mike, much of what you had read? Um, the way I understand it in the simplest sense is that the syntax you have your, your module, and then you type in your factory, whatever it is, and then you look at the graphic and you keep it for a second. Um, for a Serve it for a factory, you create an object of some sort and then return that. So just whatever you decide to think into that. Like what I showed you with the login function that I, that I did. It was a factory and I returned object. an object. Yeah. Right. Uh, a service, um, an object where you created associated with that and then you just change the properties within that object and get the service. And the provider, um, they're able to uh, kind of do things, same thing factory, create objects and return that. But you can also. Um, add some quick configuration files which can be complex things. Right. Controller can. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> no, that does. Um, so uh, you can basically configure uh, variables uh, from that provider service. So. Okay. All right. So uh, one thing I failed to mention actually was that in this uh, login example um, I am actually calling it uh, let's see auth service and in the controller right here I'm actually injecting that so it's it's very modular code so I could inject this auth service anywhere I want to use it and uh, you know in whatever control I want to use it so um, anyway, so uh, services can also allow you to um, communicate uh, between controllers. So in this example, I have, um, I'm sorry, I've included this all in the same file, but I have a main controller, controller one and controller two, um, and basically is what it does is it, uh, takes this, uh, this input's value and logs it to either the first uh, log or the second log via, uh, via the controller. Uh, so if I say, and, and I can post these uh, the links to these pointers uh, so you can see, but... Um, 
Uh, I can put it in hip chat or wherever. So yeah. So if I log to both, it'll log it to both. If I log it to two. Yeah, can do that. Log to one. So uh, basically, is what that is doing is it's the main controller is getting the uh, the message. It's passing into the service, and that service is uh, basically broadcasting it to these other two controllers, and these two controllers are getting it and putting it in that log. It's adding it to uh, an array. Uh, and then I have an ng repeat right here um, in each log. So message and messages uh, in each controller. And uh, anyway, I'll let you look at that. I'm not going to spend too much time explaining it. But um, but the, the point I wanted to get at is that services allow you to communicate between controllers if these controllers are secluded to themselves. Um, they they can share variables and, and that so um, okay so the lastly I want to this is the last one I, I want to cover routes uh, routes enables you to create different URLs for uh, different content in your application having different URLs for different con uh, content enables the user to bookmark URLs. To specific content and send those URLs to friends, etc. Um, and AngularJS, uh, each such bookmarkable URL is called a route. So if you have a complex Angular application, and it doesn't really have to be a complex, uh, these routes will determine which view is loaded and which controller is executed. And um, uh, so Let's just jump to this. I'll show you uh, exactly what I mean. Okay. So right here I have, uh, you know, it's loading home page. And this home, I have three pages about, contact, and about. Or home, contact, and about, yeah. And so I have a message on each, I have the title, um, it's pretty basic. Um, and so whenever I click these links, it loads these views and it, it'll load these controllers if, if I have a controller set up for it. And as, how that does it is I have a, a route, um, I define when the URL is equal to, you know, just the slash, which is, is the root or the uh, domain name, uh, it just loads home.html, uses the main controller. When it's set to about, uh, slash about, so whatever my URL or my uh, domain slash about, uh, it goes to, or it loads pages about.html, which is right here. So that's what happens when I click the about link. And same with contact. So, uh, this, uh, I don't think, comes bundled into Angular anymore. You have to uh, include the ng router package. However, there's another package that's a little better, in my opinion, called uh, UI router. And the reason why I like that better is because UI router allows you to have nested routes. So you can, um, you can, if you look up in my address bar, you can, have domain.com slash uh, about slash team and it'll load the about and the team. So like in the about page it'll for example you could have tabs in that page and you could load the, the team page in that about. Uh, but you can do unlimited you could have um, you know query strings uh, or whatever. Uh, and it, it will load the content based on those query strings or put variables in uh, wherever you need them. Uh, anyways, it's, it's really neat. So I can uh, also provide a link to that. Uh, but 
that's kind of it. Uh, any questions? I mean, that's kind of uh, somewhat basic, but you know, for those who are beginners, that might be a little more complex. Yeah, Angular just allows you to write. Exactly. It can. Uh, you have things like Phantom JS that will help with that. Uh, Angular is getting better with that. They're, I think they're releasing a new version in a few months or something like that. But I think they're improving that because that is an issue. However, um, Angular. I, I probably, uh, Angular has a use case for everything and is not the best solution for other things. Like, for example, a front-facing landing page probably wouldn't be the best use case for it, which SEO would be the most relevant. Um, and uh, the reason being is, is one the SEO issue, but uh, it's just not, you, you can't really utilize a lot of the power behind Angular in a, it's a simple front facing web page. Um, Angular is, is more geared towards uh, back end applications, well, it's the front end, but applications. Uh, yeah, exactly. Spa applications, pretty much. Yes, single page applications. Um, so. But a lot of it is knowing when and how to use Angular, it's, it's not for everything. And uh, you gotta be really careful not to, you know. I've I've kind of run into this issue where it's like, oh, let's use it for this. I like how it looks for this. Let's use it for that. And it's not necessarily the best tool for everything. So, but when uh, it is very very good at what it does and what what you use it for. So. Kind of like using one JavaScript pattern over another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, he's leveled up. So if you want to lift up, I I think this was said before, but if uh, if you want to learn more about Angular, and I mean if you haven't already, um, Code School has a really good course on uh, Angular. It's called Shaping Up with Angular. They've actually just released a second one, which is, uh, what is it called? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. That one's not free, though. That's not free, but anyway, the first one is free. It covers uh, plenty. I mean, all the stuff you need to know. There's also another really good place. Pluralsight does a lot of real deep dive into Angular stuff. Yeah. Best practices in Angular. Um, well, it's like site just bought code school by the way. I know. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Huh? I wish you so, could get both of them as one membership. That'd be great. Yeah, he yeah. also has a really good thing that works on the energy power of Angular works. Demi? Demi. Demi? This doesn't go through and says this is the syntax and what's my life. It shows you how it's going to work in the same time. That's cool. A lot of this is. You kind of have to real second. You, Demi? Demi. Well, you you mean, like, like Academy, but you um, You know, a lot of this is trial and error, and uh, once you really know the concept of what it's doing and what the syntax is, is actually doing, then it's a lot easier to understand and grasp the concept, though. Uh, whenever I was, I was learning, and I'm still learning, um, you know, it's... You see something done, and it just seems really um, uh, overwhelming. It's like, wow, what, what's he doing? But uh, especially coming from a design background, but uh, once you kind of understand what it's doing and how it's doing it, and the, the concept of of how it works, it it really makes a lot of sense, and you learn faster.